show throws the spotlight on those living in the public eye. This week, Tony Abbott has taken a beating after winking whilst talking to a 67-year-old phone sex worker. And when I saw the headline, Tony Abbott winks over pensioner, I thought... <laughs> that is one vowel from being a very different headline. <laughs> a very different headline. <laughs> People are really divided over this. Some think Tony is a horrible sexist, while others think he's a sleazy asshole. <laughs> Personally, I'm really on the fence on this one. <laughs> but, Marty, yeah. I reckon Tony only winked because he recognised the voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one of his ladies. <laughs> Can you believe that under this government, 67-year-old women are doing phone sex work to make ends meet? Mm. The carbon tax doesn't look so bad now, does it, Grandma? <laughs> this is Dirty Laundry Live! <laughs> Welcome to the show, everyone, and hello to our guests, Eddie Perfect, hey. Brooke Suchwell, hey. Wendy Squires and Lovely. Marty Sheargold. Hello hey, to you all. Nice to see you, Brookie. Thank you. You're looking fit. You so been in the gym this week, or what have you been doing? You asked me that last week. I ask um, you that every week. No, I'm actually <laughs> curious, though. Tell me. Should I get a new question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've got a question for you. Yeah. Are you are you, are you a winker? Do you um have you um I, I, called a yeah I uh, fine in your time? I wink and lick the lip. I am. Oh. <laughs> That's very generous. Because, uh, yeah, some yeah. ladies love that. They go, ooh, ooh, lick your lip again, you winky fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. Remember, this is a quiz. It is live, Eddie, so don't fuck up. You're not on Offspring now, mate. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Eddie, for one point. Who sang on Ellen's talk show this week with their back to the audience the entire time, including when Ellen thanked her? That would be Sia Furla. Sia Furla is correct. Nah. Wow. Nah. No, there she is. There is Sia with no. her blonde bob. No. You can't see her. Hey! <laughs> Good right, work, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> you get the Zoe Coombs Ma pun, pun point joke. for the night. Thank so, you very please, much. well done. Well done. The Australian songstress made a rare appearance on The Ellen Show, performing her hit Chandelier, and had her back to the audience the entire time. That's her in the corner, Marty. I loved it. I thought it and was brilliant. The reason mm. she's doing that is because she wants to embrace a performing style as a way of rejecting our culture's uh, obsession with appearance. Yeah, which I don't isn't working that. for me because I'm a I'm a bum man, so that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly where I want to be. And her dress was going up at different points through the performance as well, so it was quite titillating in many ways. Or bummelating. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now Sia actually retired from fame, as it were, in 2010. She stopped performing, only writing for other artists, including Rihanna and Katy Perry. So she can put a song together. She refused to do any media because she was struggling with severe anxiety okay. and couldn't cope with the pressures of public life. Wendy, where do you stand on the whole, I'm going to perform, but with my back to the audience? Well, get a life. Really? Do you think it's a, a gimmick or do you think that she actually... I think everyone's run out of angles now, so she's given them the back. Right. <laughs> okay. I thought it was... So a... no sympathy for her severe anxiety and the fact that she's trying to come Don't back? Don't go on TV if you've got severe anxiety. Right. <laughs> that's yeah. a good... That's a tip. But there's a... But there's a typical... <laughs> so, from Wendy Sia, <laughs> just finish it. Uh, <laughs> end of career. End of career. My this wife and I were question. discussing this in bed because, you know, that's how we roll. We talk about Sia Furler in bed. And I don't think she'd mind us discussing this because it, it, it does raise a, con a conversation point about what it means to perform and whether you can perform without performing, whether you can essentially have your cake mm. and eat it too. And I was like, because I'm, I'm a performer, I'm like, if you go, don't go on TV if you don't want to perform. My wife had a really good point that, you know, that she, she, what I don't like is a spin doctoring, that it's about now, it's about... Um, rejecting fame, whereas it kind of grew out of a need to fix some anxiety issues, yeah. I think. But, I mean, why shouldn't she be able to run her career the, sh the way well, she wants to? Well, essentially she wants to wants contribute to something, you know, artistically, musically, whatever. Does that yeah. involve... The it's cynical part of me goes, oh, it's, it's convenient because it's an angle. Mm. The other part of me goes, uh, I guess she gets to do call her own shots and why yeah. not? The year she's 10 part of me... She's got a great voice, Eddie. She's got a yeah, brilliant she's a voice. She's an yeah. amazing performer. It doesn't mean she can't sing. Do you... But it's not really great TV seeing someone's back. 
do you do radio because you don't want people to <laughs> just become <laughs> obsessed with your looks, Marty? Yeah, is that... it's a distraction. Yeah. I struggle with my looks a lot. And, <laughs> and so you think, well, I'll, I'll just put my voice yeah. out there and then yeah. they can just accept me for my great talent. Sometimes you know when you're too hot. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not fair. Right. It's just not it's fair. Not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, who made a surprise Tell that to appearance? Tell the 67-year-old sex workers, eh? I yeah, have told nice. her. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's not the only thing you've told her, Marty. <laughs> At $2.49 yes. a minute, yeah. I've heard. Yeah. I didn't tell her much, mate, I can tell you that. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> you asked. You no, made. don't stop. Um, <laughs> who made a surprise appearance at this week's Billboard Music Awards? Oh, now, um, it was MJ, M Michael Jackson. Yes, from yes. Beyond the Grave, it was Michael Jackson. There he is. He appeared as a hologram performing a song from his new album, Escape, yeah. which is basically an album full of unfinished rejects that they dug out of the rubbish bin. <laughs> and Pretty amazing technology, It though, is amazing it? technology. It looks like he's right there, but we know that he died of a drug-induced heart attack. Yeah. And so he's not there. Yeah. Actually, well, I've got some breaking news. Hologram is incorrect. It's, in fact, a, a technology called Pepper's Ghost. It's projection. Oh. It's not a hologram. Okay. So, these performances, creepy or cool? Well, it's kind of taking Sia's argument to the nth degree. Yeah, I, I love the idea that he probably exists on a USB stick mm. now. <laughs> you could just oh, no, email MJ yeah. all over the world if wow. you had the projector. It's like I Dream of Genie. Maybe a USB stick and Out Michael Jackson comes <laughs> up. You can put that USB stick anywhere, I Moon Man. <laughs> Can you project a hologram anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. So, <laughs> Brooke, if you met an untimely death in the next couple of weeks, would you like to be on the show as a hologram? It's incredibly uncomfortable right now. Well, I'm not going to kill you to play out the fantasy. <laughs> no, it's, it's a funny one. I mean, you know, if we, we don't sort out a bit of climate change, there could be, you know, there'll be tree museums that we take our kids to. It's nice that they get a little taste of... Oh, maybe not the best choice of words, but like, you know, we had some, <laughs> some great music in our time and it's nice to be able to share that. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't, I, uh, but yeah. I still feel a bit weird about that whole identity being owned and controlled by someone else. I mean... Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to be remembered. I don't want an award struck in my name, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> are you, saying, are you yeah. saying that because that's what you want? No. <laughs> I, don't know. I seriously want to be forgotten. I think that there's too many images and reminders of us. It's like, when you're dead, just piss off. <laughs> yeah. And let someone die. Wendy, bonus point for you. Where else did Michael Jackson show up this week? At a record signing. Absolutely. <laughs> the ghost of Michael Jackson, or an image of Michael Jackson turned up. There he is. Just to be clear, that's the impersonator in the foreground. All right. And there he is in the background, the ghost of Michael Jackson. A 14-year-old fan took a few shots while getting an autograph from the Michael Jackson tribute act, mm. and when he checked his photos, saw the ghost of Michael Jackson. Heavy stuff. Or is it? <laughs> Looks like Yoko Ono. Someone's tripping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be anything. Ghost of Yoko Ono and she's still alive. It's she's a still, projection. Yeah. <laughs> I still project. It's looking like a fingerprint on the lens to me, Lars. Let's have really? another look. You're calling fingerprint there. No, no it's I definitely, it's definitely Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> the kid who took the photo said it's just like he popped his head up and to see what was going on, then he left. Oh, scary. Mm. Of course, we have an insider on this story. We haven't seen him since last year, so welcome back to Dirty Laundry Live, our correspondent from the afterlife, the ghost of Michael Jackson. Hello, 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 Hello. Oh, Hello you. the ghost Hello. of Michael Jackson. I love you, Lars. Your mum. <laughs> the ghost of Michael Jackson. Clear this up once and for all. Was that you in the photo? Oh, no, Lawrence. There's only one ghost of me, and I speak exclusively to Dirty Laundry Live. <laughs> any, any other ghosts you see are just tacky impersonations. Good to hear. And <laughs> congratulations on the album Escape. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> yes. Why okay. is it called Escape? Because I already had an album out called Bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Michael, have you run into anyone interesting recently in the afterlife? Oh, yes, just recently. Margaret Thatcher showed up here in, in the afterlife. Margaret Thatcher? Yeah. What's she doing? Well, she's running a phone sex line to help make them... <laughs> Great to speak to you again, the ghost of Michael Jackson. I love you, Alice. Thank you. We'll see you soon. <laughs> of course, that was a real ghost. No magician's tricks there, Marty. I know, I shared a dressing room with him. <laughs> <laughs> Do not reveal the real identity of the ghost of Michael Jackson. But he's all hands. <laughs> <laughs> All gloved hand. Glove? Marty, <laughs> yes. how do you know you've got the hots for someone? E e oh, you know, you get that sort of feeling. You get a feeling? Yeah, yeah. You, you're sort of excited and it's mm -hmm. like, wow, this is all a bit new and real. Something else happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't you it? Do you get very polite when you fall in love? Oh, so polite. You do, do you do the shoulder? Yeah, you? I do a bit of that. Yeah. Then I do a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you look them in the eyes, an arrow appears. Just like Joel Madden and Kylie Minogue in this week's <laughs> NW. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a device often used by the mags to suggest an affair. But it's not just Kylie and Joel who have arrow eyes for each other. On the next page of NW, Gwyneth Paltrow set her eyes on 28-year-old heartthrob Max Gee. Minghella. Mmm. That's a difficult And they one. weren't even in the same picture. No. <laughs> That's pretty good. Gwyneth must have some really serious stuff going on. Somehow her arrow eyes mm. jumped time and space. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a bit of a Linda Blair arrow eye kind of going on over there. A Linda Blair? Yeah. <laughs> Right, yes. Yeah. She's cranking it around. Yeah, yeah she's head's half spun. It's going to go the full 360. Yeah. yeah. Do you she's... think she quotes Linda Blair? <laughs> <laughs> There's only one quote. Only for $2.89 a minute, you <laughs> yeah, know. Done. For the, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Something about my mother that I won't quote right now. <laughs> I think you know the one. Even though it's a device, it must be true because we all know whatever you look at, you love. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that feeling. I love how it's a one-way arrow. That's oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I love it. arrow stays above the chin. Arrow above the chin. I'm sorry, oh, everyone, that is so lingered. unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for you, but I just love your junk, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie. Oh, it's been there for too long. Yes. It's been there for too long. It's weird now. It's burning. <laughs> Eddie, <laughs> this week, Nova yes. FM radio host Ryan Fitzgerald caused a big controversy when he tricked a woman into touching his naked body. Who was the woman? Um... Oh. Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Can you help me out here. Um, Armitage. Armitage. Sam Armitage is correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember, I said this is a quiz and it's live. It's not like Offspring, Eddie, so get your shit together. Jealousy's <laughs> <laughs> a curse. Nova's Fitzy and Whipper show played a prank on Armitage when they invited her into the show's panic room. There she is. A pitch black room where a naked Ryan Fitzgerald was hiding and she touched him. <laughs> now, I reckon being invited into a panic room is a bad idea. <laughs> Armitage laughed along with the stunt, but does that make it okay, Wendy? No. <laughs> Do you want to go into the panic room and touch a dude no. in the dark? No, Dad, no. no. What do you think about that whole kind of stunt thing? I think yep. it's lame, I don't think it's funny, and it's radio for a reason, you know? Yeah. We don't need to see it. What is... Oh, it's radio for a reason. That is, listen to it. Yeah. So why are we, why are we watching these people? Well, Marty? Marty. You've got yeah, some it's answers. an interesting one for me, Moon Man, Because you work... With the same I'm network with the and same pull down network. some serious coin, massive money. So you don't want to slag off. <laughs> so you don't want to slag off Nova or the Murdochs. No, it's not for me to sort of comment. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Sometimes you find yourself in life where you've got things you want to say, but you just don't say them. Yeah. Because <laughs> you want to service that mortgage. <laughs> because I have huge debt. <laughs> and you don't want a Lachlan Murdoch hologram inside you. No. <laughs> no. Although, if he wanted to, I'd let him. <laughs> Have you employed the um, shock tactics? 
No, that's not sort of what I, what I, that's not the sort of style of radio that I make. That's not to take anything away from other people that are doing it, but it's, uh, <laughs> look, it's one of those things in life, you get ups and downs and uh, people Look at Marty, coming. watch him squirm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you. No, I am. You um, kiss ass. I tell you what. Radio. <laughs> look at you. No, I tell you what, you won't meet a nicer bloke than Fitzy. He's a lovely guy. He is a good guy. And, um, you know, mate, things happen. Processes yeah. fall Has down. Has this been controversial? What, what's the problem? I, I, oh, I, yeah. Yeah. This, so oh, the, well. the, the idiot people that listen to like crappy stunt driven radio, Hang right? On. <laughs> <laughs> I said stunt driven. I said stunt driven no, radio. Well, well observed. I like, oh, that's a, you know, you can trap an old lady in a room with killer bees, but you can't <laughs> put them in a room with a naked fitzy. What, why would that shock them? I, I didn't think it was such a big deal. I thought, you know, he's in there naked, he's not going to let any harm come to her, he's covered up his genitals, what is the big deal? Well, we've recently had a court case that possibly deals with similar ideas, that could be a bit of a big deal, And maybe. it's actually illegal. <laughs> Okay. Oh, funny, <laughs> words. Funny, funny words that are being thrown around now. Yeah, yeah. allegedly. Journo, so, words. so making someone touch your naked body is illegal because at our place we. <laughs> 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 I'm looking at it now. Because <laughs> at our place we call that Christmas. <laughs> cool. I reckon you've covered it, mate. <laughs> you want us to Put move on? Away. Yeah. So. Uh, as, as a massive star, I was actually at an event. <laughs> I think it's needless to say, but as a massive star, yeah. I was at an event last night and Sam Armitage's Sunrise co-host, Natalie Barr, there's a fly live on the screen, was there. I asked her about the stunt and here's what she had to say. What would you do if you walked into a room and I was in there naked? I wouldn't walk into a room with you naked. Ever. Never. Nothing against you, never personally. Say never. I, no, I can. You really? Are I'm, you sure? I'm afraid of the dark. I mean, have another look yeah. at this. Hang on a second. No, the oh, answer no. still stands. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a woman who knows what she wants. Or That's a cruel and stupid woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But honestly, I think surprising someone with a naked body is just a cheap stunt that is clearly designed to drum up ratings. And quite honestly, <laughs> I think... Oh, not again. Uh, I... <laughs> not again. Uh, <laughs> mate, that is... You, that, that is, is a different <laughs> man. That is so wrong. That is not Look at wrong. That cheeky so, little face. so that's what 14, 14 years that's ago. Fourteen years ago, that baby <laughs> is about to go to a party on Saturday night. <laughs> dressed wow. like that? No, she won't be dressed like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you still sanction these games? Because they might play them at parties. Oh, they might play them. At, these games are wrong, and men <laughs> should never be allowed to be nude it's the, ever it's again. The fact and that it is swinging. It's moving swinging. <laughs> You should have pixelated it. I don't the want patient. it to touch just me. Stabilise don't, a little bit. Don't pretend to be disgusted. No, I love it. <laughs> I okay, reckon you've never on. looked better than in that photo. Yeah, I reckon that. I reckon that guy was a bit of a dickhead, <laughs> um, or as you like to say, one of the great dead shits. Yeah, he's right yeah. up there. Massive news on the Kardashian front this week, Wendy. What is the big story? The wedding. The wedding. Mm. It's huge. It's exciting, yeah, isn't it? I'm pretty excited about it. But it is not the wedding. The big news. <laughs> the big news is that Kendall Jenner has a pimple. Oh. Yes, oh, no. there it is. TMZ covered it off as they do. The pimple is the newest addition to the Kardashian family brand. <laughs> no. Is it a Kimple? Yeah, Kimple the is Kimple? very good. Yeah. We were going to call it Carbuncle with a K, but Kimple's better. <laughs> It might have been the nerves that she suffered. She was at the Billboard Awards oh, yeah, and she was, had to oh. present. Yeah, that was and awful. it didn't go smoothly <laughs> for her at all. The band about to rock the Billboard Awards comes from Down Under, but the direction they're heading is straight up. Recently, they made their debut on the Billboard 200 number two this summer. And now we welcome one. Oh, <laughs> sweet up. Guys, I'm the worst reader. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did she say? Did she say moing? Is what she said. Is she only sixteen? Is she the one that's sixteen? No, she's eighteen. Twelve. 
Oh. <laughs> is that her IQ or her age? No, I don't think she's 16. Yeah, I thought she was 16. Yeah, she's a bit older than that. Kendall later blamed it on not wearing her contacts. Oh, no. And that's not a good idea. If you're going to read something on an auto cue, put your contacts on, Kendall. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's an ageless joke. It's not having a go at people who wear glasses, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Got out of that. So, wedding jitters. I'm yeah. very excited. Because mm. the story is they're in Paris now, but they're off to Florence for the wedding mm. on the weekend. Good. You've got the travel plans down, yeah, Marty. Yeah, I'm going to be there. Um, Lana Del Rey's going to be there. Mm. Yeah. Um, Jay-Z is going to be there. Because the big furor over it was that Jay-Z refused to MC it if it was going to be a part of the Kardashian show. Right. And, and, and he was like, I'm not going to do it. And I thought, good gear, Jay. You know, don't be a part of it because mm. that is terrible television. Do you reckon? The <laughs> Kardashians. Yeah, the Kardashian. <laughs> Keeping up with the Kardashians is fabulous television. Are you joking? Oh, I love it. You do not. Where do you stand on the Kardashians, Wend? Well, I just would wonder what would happen if they didn't have the good genes. I think that they'd be bagging groceries and they wouldn't be getting a lot of tips for it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, being this on the telly... <laughs> right, the this I was really depressed. I yeah, no, really so sad. did I, Eddie. Because I was thinking of Chloe at the grocery store. Just oh. like, not much getting in the bag there. <laughs> <laughs> that was, no, Kendall. Was, that was Kendall Jenner. I was more thinking... Oh, right. Yeah. OK. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Put, the, put yeah. the apple in the bag. I hope they make a wedding sex video and I hope they call it something old, something new, something borrowed, someone blue. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't applaud that if you don't want to. <laughs> the Kardashian family can be a little confusing. Are you up to date with the Maddie? No. I don't know, no. OK, so for anyone who hasn't been keeping up with the Kardashians in the lead-up to the big day this weekend, here's our expert, Greg Larson. Hi, I'm Greg Larson. There's my degree. Right now, the Kardashians are one of the most famous brands, or should I say families, on the planet. But who are they? Where do they come from? And how do they manage to keep it so real? The current crop of Kardashians are Kim, Chloe, Courtney, and Robert, who are the biological children of Kris Jenner and Robert Kardashian Sr. But to learn more, we need to go back to the beginning. Let's rewind to 1995. Robert Kardashian Sr. first rose to prominence in 1995 when he served as one of O.J. Simpson's defence lawyers. Robert liked O.J. so much that he even let the alleged murderer sleep on the family couch. This led to rumours that O.J. Simpson was in fact Khloe Kardashian's dad, a rumour which luckily Khloe cleared up on US talk show Chelsea Lately. Because I did him once. Fast forward to February 2007, where a sex tape is released of the relatively unknown Kim Kardashian and her completely unknown boyfriend, rapper Ray J, adding them to the long list of celebrities with sex tapes, including Paris Hilton, Pamela Anderson, and Screech from Saved by the Bell. Mmm, freshly washed. Oh, great. I can't finish now. This newfound notoriety led to the creation of the reality TV series Keeping Up With The Kardashians, which gave viewers a unique insight into the family's lives, including scenes like this. I look so hot. And this. Kim, would you stop taking pictures of yourself? Your sister's going to jail. And this. When I came back from the hospital, the first thing I did was go look at my vag in the mirror. By 2010, Keeping Up With The Kardashians had made Kim the highest paid reality TV star in the world, earning over $6 million a year. Kim married a basketball player who shared the same name as her mum, Chris. 72 days later, the couple were divorced, but not before making approximately $18 million from their wedding, which makes it significantly more profitable than my first marriage. My wife just left me with a crippling debt an old blanket and an addiction to sleeping pills. You fucking idiot. You fucking idiot. You fuck. And then came back with Prince Charming, Kanye West. No, 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 no. And together, they had a beautiful child named Northwest. It must be nice being able to see your kids every day without having some caseworker 
watching over as you try and kiss your own son goodbye. Chris divorced Robert and then married a guy called Bruce, who won a gold medal in the Montreal Olympics for the decathlon, then was featured on a box of Wheaties, and is currently rumoured to have an addiction to plastic surgery, which has led to wild speculation that he wants to become a woman. Chris and Bruce have two daughters, Kendall and Kylie, who have joined the Kardashian clan of Kim, Chloe, Courtney, and Robert, who is thinking of changing his name to Crobbit. So there you have it. That's the Kardashians. They're a brand. They're an empire. But most importantly, they're a family. Sure, they have some problems, but they manage to make it work. <laughs> they make it work. <laughs> Back to you, Lawrence. Thank you, Greg. Superb work. I hope that's helped you, Eddie. Oh, <laughs> I want to fucking kill myself. <laughs> horrible, horrible stuff, Eddie. It's horrible stuff. Eddie, this will make you what? happy. We're going to give you a question. Oh, cheer me up, Lawrence. OK. Which extremely famous singer has been accused of using her Instagram and Twitter to cyberbully a fan this week? That's right, cyberbully. Yeah. That would be Rihanna. It is Rihanna. That's right, Rihanna has been accused of cyberbullying 16-year-old Alexis Carter. Carter decided to dress up as her idol at her school's Hollywood-themed prom night in Baltimore and had a friend make her an imitation batwing bodysuit. Mm. That's her on the right there and Riri on the left, an outfit previously worn by Rihanna. Carter posted a shot of herself in the outfit tagging her idol then Riri tweeted the pic comparing it to her own outfit and adding a sad face to her 35 million Twitter followers. That's right, so some pressure for a 16-year-old. She's been abused online. She's been hounded. Well done, Rihanna. Now, in Rihanna's defence, she was probably munted at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. She's a big run well, because yeah. Riri is a self-confessed bad girl. Yeah. She yeah. is a bad girl. She likes naughty, to go hard. Naughty girl. There's a difference between a bad being a bad girl, as in like you know you're championing a form of, sort of sexual expression that is liberated, yeah. and being an asshole. You know? <laughs> <laughs> line but it can be crossed <laughs> my question is i think this is the peril of social media though because i don't know that she actually did intentionally offend this girl i'm not a massive fan but i think this has been taken and made into something it's not because i i mean she she laid a reference she what she put a picture out saying um uh, Wu Tang Clan, this and referenced their ba their band logo and said she gets it, she gets it, and kind of was doing a bit of a sister shout out, getting a bit street. Mm. Maybe it was just a slip of the digit. Like I reckon it was meant to be a closed colon and it was an open, and so it was actually a smiley face. Mm. And this whole storm has been created out of parenthesis one gone slip. wrong. Parenthesis, <laughs> <laughs> colons attack. And I suppose the silver lining here is that at least punctuation's back in. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> the, Good to see the colon back. Yeah. Always good to see the colon back, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've all slipped a finger around a colon and had a few balls. <laughs> not using your colon properly. Yeah. Uh, you're not using your colon properly, you're <laughs> <There's> nowhere. <laughs> you're in the shit. <laughs> Moving on from Brown Town, Rihanna <laughs> says she's not a role model, but should she be more careful about her Twitter activity? She has got 35 million people out there. I suppose they're not all hanging on every word. How many Twitter followers have you got, Eddie? Uh, don't pretend you don't know, <laughs> mate. <laughs> <laughs> 40,000? 40, yeah, just 40K. But um, I think there's an interesting Can thing where people go, oh, are, you, are, they, are you supposed to be a role model? You're not supposed to be a role model. If, isn't everyone supposed to be a role model. Isn't there just a kind of... You contribute to society as a decent person. You don't victimise people. You, you don't bully people. You don't marginalise people. Isn't that just, like, what it means to be walking around on the face of the earth? Oh, well, I love I think... that. That's brilliant. <laughs> but, you know... But what's fame got to do with it, you know? No. Sometimes I bully people <laughs> when I'm inside my car. <laughs> <laughs> because that's a diplomatically immune zone. Yeah. <laughs> We're allowed to be... Violent and outrageous. You can do whatever you can drink, you can do whatever you, do whatever you want. Fine, you can do whatever you want yeah. in your car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like international waters. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah. You can Doesn't be knuckle count. deep up your nose <laughs> yes. and scream at someone. It's fine. 
You, so you weren't talking about being in the car? No, okay. no. You, you're right. You are allowed to do anything in the car. <laughs> I don't want to pull up next to you at the lights. No, I'm terrified. No sense. It's the footballer as role model that I love the most because it's just yeah. like, pick another guy, please. <laughs> <laughs> He's just catching a footy, dudes. Relax. Mm. Well, some, some people use Jesus as their role model. Well, that's a funny one. And he didn't... <laughs> he didn't finish his apprenticeship, so... Yeah. <laughs> Pick your role models carefully. Yeah. There, there, there is a theory that idolatry was originally in place for... Idolatry? Idolatry, did you like that one? I, yeah. I did like it. Yeah. 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 Um, no, but there, there's a theory that it was, it was to, to pass on aspirational skills as a form of evolution. So, you know, whoever was the best hunter, medicine man, this, that, the other, you know, it, it oh. would be... So you'd have notoriety or, or be noteworthy for being able to pass on something which was an aspirational skill that other people wanted to acquire. Mm. It made what Moses exactly? really angry. Yeah. Yeah. Moses got really angry about idolatry. I think right. it is. Smashed the tablets. Yeah. Yes. Although they, people remembered what the rules were, obviously. He, he smashed, smashed the, the tablets, yeah. but God had given him the message. How dare he? I just think that the tablets that the idols... <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Why is he, he saying you're religious? Oh, no. <laughs> Why are you doing that, Moses? A minute ago you were saying he didn't finish TAFE. <laughs> <laughs> Is, is exactly what qualities are we learning from the celebrity of today? And so, therefore, what should Rihanna be presenting? What, what skill does she have that teaches people to live a better life? She's pretty hot. Yeah. <laughs> Dirty, I don't want to be shallow, but she is pretty hot. Yeah. Dirty Laundry Live is all about celebrity. And just the other day, I was invited along to yet another red carpet. Oh. The premiere of X-Men Days of Future Past. You are part of two of the biggest franchises in the world, Game of Thrones and X-Men. You are really fucking famous, man. It's like... a perfect storm of news. <laughs> g'day, g'day, mate. How are you? Good to see you. We go back a long way. Oh, uh, met on the Denise show when you were That's promoting right. Paperback Heroes. Oh, my Lord, yeah. So we're both massive now, both very famous. <laughs> and, uh, you've got... I'm hoping okay. Yeah, good, good. I just want you not to be nervous. More importantly, I like the way you dressed up. Thank you very the black much. tie suit. Come Thank on. you. You're looking pretty sharp too. I did a movie here in Melbourne uh, about four or five years ago. I love you too. Yeah, yeah with my I friend Peter Hellier. So it's really good to be back. So Peter Hellier actually claims to be your oh. friend. Are you a friend of his? Well, he's a little needy and clingy and almost, let me, let, dare I say, Stockery. Everyone's <laughs> talking about the nude scene in this yeah. film. Yeah. Um, closed set or do you just... You don't no. mind people seeing you jump? Oh, I don't mind. No, the embarrassing thing about it was not written to be a nude scene. That was my idea. Really? He said, Wolverine in bed with a hot woman gets out wearing boxer shorts. I'm like, I'm sorry. Wolverine. There's no guy I know who's in bed with a hot woman getting out with underwear on. When Wolverine gets aroused, do the, do the claws just... <laughs> just Listen, mate, you've always been known for class. Everything. Ever since I met you all those years back. Well, let's not go there. Let's not go there. No, don't okay. dip below. But, yes. Uh, if my desired. Is, my show is Dirty Laundry Live. It's all about being crash. Will you come on? I insist. Really? Yeah. Let's find a time. Let's do it, man. Okay. Good on you. Nice to see, see you. See you, buddy. Dirty Laundry. Love it. Yeah, I think that that was uh, a solid no from you. <laughs> Good on you, though. Yeah, yeah Good on you. He, he said yeah. yes and started looking around for Peter Dinklage. Where is he? <laughs> Where is he Where's Peter? the dink? Where's the dink? If I, I think Peter Dinklage is a great actor. Mm -hmm. If I was oh, going to no, cast yeah. him, yeah. I'd probably make him happy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine uh, you would. Mm. No. So fine, mate. I, just so that bad. news just... Breaking, never say that again. <laughs> <laughs> How awesome is Hugh, though? He does radiate yeah, a bit of white light, doesn't he? Yeah. Doesn't he? Mm. Uh, have you ever worked with Hugh? No. You're a famous actress. No. When are you going to do a movie? Have you when? done a movie? Oh, I've done one. Let's oh. not talk about it. Really? Um, <laughs> Shh, not one of those. Um, my I'm not talking about your sex tape. No. I mean, a movie. No, actually, what kind of, I think, added to the creep factor, though, I particularly liked it when you cut over Peter and went, I love you too. And it took me a minute to realise you were referencing a movie title. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too much, too far, Laura. Oh, no, OK, you're right, it's Peter, yeah. I love you yeah. too. I love you too. I love you too, stop that. I you, love you too. Can you stop bending down when you yeah, talk I know. about it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Every time you've mentioned him, you've gone... Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> like he's down here, like Dickie Dean. <laughs> Dick!
come on, be serious. Okay. The biggest response on the red carpet, um, Peter Dinklage and uh, Hugh Jackman got a huge yell out, but Fan Bing Bing, yeah. she's the, the uh, female star, when she came in, there was huge scenes. Uh, it was uh, three tiers of people, or three stories of people at Melbourne Central, and a predominantly Asian crowd, and there was like weeping, mm. and people kind of fainting a bit, and there was lots going on. So she's massive in China. Yeah. She's massive on Weibo. Do you know what that is, Marty? No, I, oh, it's mm. the internet over there, isn't it? Yeah, it's, the, <laughs> it's, it's Chinese Twitter. Yeah, and okay. there was this big kind of surge forward. And I just wondered what it would be like to be a, a celebrity in China. I wonder if it's similar to, you know, the Western world. Do they get hounded by paparazzi? Is there a Chinese word for paparazzi? I don't know why you're looking at me when you're asking this. I'm not I'm Chinese. But I, I, <laughs> what, I, what I do like is that... Really? If you, if you go to... <laughs> <laughs> what I love is that the fact that, there are, that we, we think that we are the middle of the world, like living in the Western world, and all the famous people that we know and all of the amazing cultural icons that we know are universal, and they're not. Like, you don't have to go to India. They don't know who Bob Marley is or Elvis Presley is or... You know, um, uh, yes, any of those? Do. No, they, they don't. They, they, they have a completely separate tradition. Their own stars have sold. Asher Bosley sold like seven hundred million albums. You know, that it's it's wow. a parallel universe, mm. and I find that really refreshing to go. You know, we think all this shit matters, mm. and it doesn't. Yeah. Fancy getting them all out here and sending them to Melbourne Central, though, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> they know where else to put the movie on. <laughs> really? It was quite nice out there. Oh, the shove, shot shove them in a Westfield? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon, Dink? <laughs> Hang on, he's <laughs> Where was, the red, where was the red carpet? Was in front of that kind of tacky pub that's down the bottom of the... Oh, yeah, the or? sort of clocky tower pub that they've <laughs> got down there. The oh, court. God, wow, You're taking a very nice part of Melbourne to pieces. Melbourne Central's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did ask our uh, series producer, Peter, if there was a uh, word in Chinese for paparazzi. And like a good dad, he said, yes, there is. It's prawn crackerazzi. <laughs> <laughs> You said, you said Peter said that. Peter said just that. Checking. <laughs> I just needed to blame that joke on <laughs> someone. <laughs> Next question. Oh. Oh. I tell you what, Darren. We bloody rehearsed this, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> Eddie, what A-list movie star just threw me a B-plus lister mm -hmm. this beer? Brooke, help me out. You can help me out. You he can has help him out. lots of children that are from all over the globe. <laughs> Brad Pitt. There Brad yes. Pitt. That well done, is Eddie. absolutely correct. <laughs> Earlier this week in New Orleans, or Norlands as you would say, Marty, yep. Brad Pitt and Matthew McConaughey wallowed like pigs in shit in their mutual celebrity <laughs> when Pitt noticed that McConaughey was on a balcony opposite him and chucked him a beer. As reported on E! Online, the event played out pretty much like this. Hey, you're as famous as me. <laughs> yeah, I'll throw you a beer. <laughs> Rowdy. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> look, 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 look. We're famous. <laughs> What a great candid moment yeah. between two hot blokes. I felt like I was there. Yeah, it really felt mm. like it. I felt cheated by not seeing Matthew McConaughey catch it. I feel like he maybe did, he dropped it. Yeah. Really? We just went straight from the throw to the glug. Where was the catch? You it's hard to catch a can when you've got a bong in your hand. Wow. <laughs> We'll find out at the after party. Because <laughs> <laughs> we'll be putting that to the yeah. test. Excellent. I love hosting Dirty Laundry Live. And I love the after party. And this year, I demanded that the ABC give me my very own party assistant. Last week, it was the very sexy Don Honey. Mm. And I made him kiss me, so I had to let him go. Because that makes it awkward in the workplace when you have... <laughs> he was all clingy. And I just went, oh, I can't bear him looking at me. So, I wonder who they've got for me this week. Yay! <laughs> Stephen Denner! Can I launch
Yeah, I have got a type. Yeah, a sexy, sexy man. Line. Now, I just <laughs> should uh, check in. Is it Stefan or Stefan? Because it's quite a shit name. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. No, it's Stefan. It's Stefan. Yeah. Good. And Dennis or Denise? Dennis. Dennis. OK. Stefan, how's the party shaping up? Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, pretty good so far, Lawrence. Although, uh, I've got to say, uh, Tony Abbott's media advisor over there in the corner, he's not looking too well. Look, give him a wink from <laughs> us. Uh, <laughs> so what... <laughs> Very nice indeed. So what's tonight's Dirty Laundry Live after-party cocktail? Well, Mr Lawrence, it is the uh, Kardashian wedding cocktail I'm uh, conjuring up here. Mainly hair and makeup. Dash of undiluted ambition. Garnish with some cold hard cash and then force feed it to the world. Excellent. <laughs> nice to see you can think on your feet when you've forgotten your lines. <laughs> <laughs> All those years of neighbours, no one gives a shit what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> they? <laughs> <laughs> Stefan, you were on Neighbours from the first episode, so do you remember much about the early days? <laughs> oh, no. No, actually, you know what I do? Because the thing that probably uh, sticks in mind is the, the, uh, the, com the sense of community and family, because mm. you've got to remember in those days it was a very, very small cast. It was only 12 in the principal cast. So Speaking you, of uh, community, was, did you and Kylie ever... <laughs> yeah, yeah you, no, did. you know what? I'm probably the only guy in the world that doesn't fancy Kylie because she played my kid's sister. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah. Mm, good mm. point. Well argued. <laughs> 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 what about Mrs. Mangle? Mm. <laughs> uh, no, that's right. What about Madge? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Madge. Definitely Madge. Hey. <laughs> what goes on behind Harold's door stays behind Harold's door. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Neighbours has been a fantastic springboard for so many actors. Kylie Minogue, you know, huge superstar, Delta Goodrum, famous singer, and Toadie, he's doing those light and easy ads. Yeah, That's kind of <laughs> where, where do you hope it takes you? No, I don't know, but I reckon I'm living the dream at the moment, Mr Lala, because I am uh, I'm making fake cocktails for a slightly overweight uh, ABC2 show host. <laughs> That's not fair. That's not fair, Stephen. That is not fair. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I meant to say calorie challenged. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Keep the cocktails on ice and I'll see you after the show. Stefan Denise, everybody. There he is. What an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> he is not. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Deep Lidge reckons he is. Yeah, is he? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the people at Hey Hey will be going mental. That's our oh, idea. Yeah. <laughs> you are such a good role model. You look you like Daryl Summers when you do that, too. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <the thing>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's time to play What Have We Learned? <laughs> you know the answers. Because you've heard them during the show and you know how to score a point, don't you, Eddie? You... Let it rip! A yell, you just yell. Yeah. You've got to yeah, yell, yell really loud. Yeah, and you've got to yeah. shout, Marty. And I mean at the bar afterwards. You are... <laughs> you're a massive tight ass. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Why does Marty do radio? Because he's so damn hot! Yes! <laughs> What does Marty do if he's got the hots for someone? There's a bit of the, a bit of the shoulder. Of the yeah. <laughs> and a lot of this. <laughs> Who is the newest addition to the Kardashian family? Crobbit! <laughs> Kenny and Jenna's Kimple. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. But we'll give you one anyway. What's the silver lining of Rihanna's cyberbullying? Punctuation is back. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Put your finger on your colon. It's... <laughs> You're the winner tonight. <laughs> it is time to go. So please thank Stefan, Wendy, Eddie, Marty and Brooke. <laughs> We're back next Thursday at 9.30. But before we go, Eddie, come on, join in. It's time for a song. <laughs> My eyes adore you <laughs> Though I've never laid a hand on you My eyes adore you <laughs> Like a
was last night. When the new season begins, there's a lot to catch up on. Mm. Have you seen the video?